Yeah. What's up, Doc? Relax. Be cool. Cause if you don't, you'll act like a fool. So be cool. It Space Jam. A 90s classic for many kids at the time. Based on two, count them, two Nike commercials in the early 90s that featured then greatest basketball player and hero to many kids around the world, Michael Jordan. Alongside the greatest Looney Tune, Bugs Bunny. And those commercials are Hair Jordan. Hey, Jordan. What'd you expect? You my friend? This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And Aerospace Jordan. Give me those Air Jordans. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes, no, yes, no. Take these or else. Check them out in their entirety. They're actually kind of funny. They would obviously go on to become a movie featuring Jordan and the ever classic cast of the Looney Tunes gang. Tunes, not tunes. Never forget it and don't let the Mandela effect tell you otherwise. Sadly, I haven't revisited the 96 original in many years, so I can't say how well it holds up, but I still remember it pretty vividly. Mm, legit enjoyable for kids, only nostalgic adults will enjoy it, I imagine. What I'm trying to say is, we need your help! Yeah, but I'm a baseball player now. Right, and I'm a Shakespearean actor. But I guess we can't just let classics be classics. We gotta find those graves, dig up the corpses, and parade them around as if we actually wanted them back. And if it wasn't bad enough, the mere existence of a revival for a movie that many would consider to be, at the time, lightning in a bottle, the optics for this one were not helping. Yup, I'm referring to the controversial statements made by the director, Malcolm Lee, basically being flabbergasted at the backlash over Lola Bunny's redesign from the original flick and saying how weird it is that we're talking about bunny boobies. Ironically, while the rest of the world was fine with how Lola was being depicted back then, being a strong, confident female and having the only legit talent out of the animated crew with her own brand of swagger and attitude to boot, I think the only people who were sexualizing her were the weirdos watching the movie and having confused boners. Us kids at the time didn't care one bit, and frankly, I thought Lola was cool. Not sexy, not hot, cool. Sexualized characters in cartoons is not new, bro. Which he says, by the way, and doesn't follow up on. The coward, from one adult to another, grow up. Boobies. The ladies have them. Quit crying about it. Don't ever call. Doll. Truth be told, even if Lola's design was kept faithful, I wasn't really looking forward to this. LeBron James just doesn't seem like he has that same heroic celebrity status that MJ had. If you really think about it, even MJ isn't much of a hero anymore. Have you read that crap about him not tipping servers at restaurants, claiming, oh, serving me was your tip? Screw you too, Horton Jordan. You know, he probably doesn't even have it anymore, guys. But more than that, the trailers just made it out to be like Warner Brothers was just masturbating their properties all over us. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because Sony did it once and it worked out great for them, right? Right? It didn't look or feel like Space Jam. So I went in under protest. Let's get this over with. This is my honest opinion of Space Jam, A New Legacy. LeBron James, played by himself, wants his son Dom, played by Cedric Joe, to take basketball seriously rather than pursue his real passion of developing his own video game. Meanwhile, at the Warner Brothers studio, the company has created a self-aware algorithm called Algae Rhythm, played by Don Cheadle, and wants to be seen as an incredible piece of tech that can insert any person's image into any movie or TV show that they watch, to which LeBron doesn't like. In retaliation for his words, Algy transports both him and his son into cyberspace and challenges LeBron to a basketball game. 
If he loses, he stays in the digital universe. While LeBron is forced to use the disbanded Looney Tunes as his teammates, Algy uses Dom on his team and uses the template of his basketball video game as the basis for the game he's challenged LeBron to. To play with you, an NBA superstar, in a high-stakes basketball game? Sounds awfully familiar. Who are you talking to? But yeah, that... Can I just watch the commercials on repeat for 90 minutes? Dear Lord, I didn't expect this to be so bad that it wouldn't even measure up to my lowest of expectations. Let's get this out of the way. If you've seen any of the critical responses, they probably go something along the lines of this. But more than that, the trailers just made it out to be like Warner Brothers was just masturbating their properties all over us. And yeah, that's pretty much the case. The audience in the stands during the basketball game is a bunch of Warner Brothers properties. I'm sure the big wigs thought this would be fun for the audience to point out all the characters they're familiar with. But I know a faint when I see it. And it wasn't working. It was distracting. Make no mistake, the original flick was a shameless promotion of sports merchandise. Come on, Michael, it's game time. Get your Hanes on, lace up your Nikes, grab your Wheaties and your Gatorade, and we'll pick up a Big Mac on the way to the ballpark. But it also inspired me to try out for basketball as a kid. I wasn't very good at it, but I credit that time in my life with the original Space Jam. This movie inspires me to lay in my bed and contemplate if there's anything good in life anymore. <laughs> Look at your faces! You were terrified! <laughs> Priceless! But as bad as the franchise anal fisting is, and believe me it is, that's to be expected if we're honest. The cardinal sin for me is twofold. One, that this is the plot to every bad kids movie ever made. The plot is LeBron is an overbearing dad who doesn't understand his son, who needs to grow up a certain way or who knows what would happen. The entire story is an excuse for him to learn how to lighten up and learn how to be a better dad. I swear to God, these storylines are going to give me an aneurysm. The moment you can identify what this plot is, you know exactly where it's going to end up. In a lot of ways, this is why the first film is so beloved. It's simple. The Toons are about to be enslaved by aliens and can only stave that off by winning a basketball game with Michael Jordan. Simple. Easy. But that doesn't compare to the travesty that is this cliched narrative and someone get me a bar of soap for mouthwashing purposes for calling it a narrative. No, 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 no. To make matters worse, I have no idea what to make of this basketball game. Because the template for its rules are rooted in Dom's arcadey basketball game, there's no way to make heads or tails of the rules. Style points are extra points, there's power-ups, multipliers. On the surface, I understand this lingo. What I can't understand is how power-ups are activated. What counts as a style point? What bonus points are there that can be exploited for maximum point earning? It's basically just artificial challenge to make the Toon Squad fall dreadfully behind and LeBron is refusing to understand how the arcade elements work to help his team. Gotta bring up the OG flick again because there's a reason why it worked so well. It was just a game of basketball with cartoon shenanigans thrown in. When a two-pointer was scored, we know why. Three-pointers, we know why. Even if you're not a sports fan like me, a rudimentary understanding of the rules won't throw you off. Every point, for the most part, is accounted for. The same cannot be said here. Because we don't understand the rules of the game, it just looks like they're cheating from the get-go. So when the actual cheating occurs, I have no idea what the difference is other than the points being rejected. Under those pretenses, who's to say that LeBron couldn't have simply yelled, We win! And have that be the end of it. If Al G can cheat, why can't the good guys then? 
so much doesn't make sense and it's a nightmare to try and keep up. What in the AARP is going on out here? So, is there anything good at all? Anything. One joke. One. And I knew it was a joke being teed up. I just didn't know what the punchline was. I don't know if this counts as a miracle, but I found Michael Jordan! You found him? Oh, I can feel his power already! Number 23, Michael Jordan! And that's all, folks! It sucks. It sucks so much. Again, I wasn't expecting anything good, but I wasn't expecting so much Warner Brothers advertising. I wasn't expecting this to have such a copy and paste story. And I sure wasn't expecting a basketball game that I couldn't keep up with. Give me the original film, complete with freaky bunny boobies and I'll be a-okay. I'd rather watch a funny and competently made film any day of the week over whatever bargain basement explosive diarrhea this turned out to be. My honest rating for Space Jam A New Legacy, a 1 out of 5. My money's on the other team. Let's run a triangle offense. We're getting crushed. A trapezoid offense? I know. Look at him. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy out there. Hope to see you soon. One final caveat as you guys move on with your day. I've decided to test my luck at a Patreon, so please consider supporting the channel. No obligations, of course. No content is gated off, but any and all contributions would mean a lot. Link in the description. Have a great one, folks.